Okay. Uh, thank you for your kind introduction. And then uh, congratulations on your first uh, International Archaeology Day uh, in Athens. So uh, I'll try to cover the most of the portion, but uh, may not be good enough uh, for the 15 minutes. So therefore, if you have any other question, uh, I put uh, my email address there. So please send me uh, an email for your question. So this is my conflict interest. Uh, uh, so let me move on. Uh, just refresh your memory. Uh, UVA melanoma is most common uh, primary eye cancer uh, in adult. However, compared to skin melanoma, which is much less uh, frequent. Uh, UVA melanoma harbors a driver mutation in GRFQ signaling pathway, especially the majority patient uh, has GNA11 or GNAQ mutation, uh, which uh, um, promotes the progression of disease. So secondary mutation uh, such as BAP1, SFCB1, uh, EI, uh, F1 AX uh, determine the aggressiveness of uh, UVA melanoma. For example, BAPA mutation, as uh, Martin say, uh, caused the early development of metastasis. Um, in contrast, SFCB1 mutation tend to develop metastasis a little bit later, and then and sometimes develop metastasis in non hepatic site. Uh, EIF1 A3 uh, usually is a good prognostic factor, uh, usually, tumor does not metastasize. So up to 50% of patients uh, develop subsequent development metastasis. Uh, interestingly, uh, not, not most of the metastasis develop in the body. So this is a current consensus in the treatment of metastatic UVA melanoma, especially in the United States. Uh, as of today, there is no FDA approved medication. Uh, NCC and guidelines are not so helpful because they suggest uh, go to the clinical trials or then the liver uh, direct therapy or systemic therapy have to be discussed. That uh, if you go to different institution, uh, they offer the different treatments. So therefore, patient is kind of confused. And there's no standard care established in, among the experts. So unfortunately, checkpoint inhibitor, uh, which is uh, work very well for skin melanoma metastasis, doesn't work for UVA melanoma metastasis. And the MEC inhibitor has been tried with very disappointing results. So most important thing is uh, uh, most of the medical oncologists uh, in community uh, may not understand the difference between skin melanoma and eye melanoma, and it's offer the same treatment as skin melanoma. That is not going to work. So that's a major confusion. Then what type of treatment is currently available, especially in the United States or uh, Europe? Uh, there are three types of treatment, liver, directed therapy, target therapy, immunotherapy, as long as time allows, I want to explain uh, this approach. <coughs> liver directed treatment, uh, majority patient develop liver metastasis and then die of uh, liver failure. So therefore approaching to the liver metastasis is very important. So then hepatic metastasis tend to have a blood supply from hepatic artery. So therefore we can put the catheter from the growing, go to the hepatic artery, inject many medicine and or something called the vessel uh, artery. In contrast, a normal liver has a dual supply from both of vein and hepatic artery, so therefore uh, liver cancer can be killed by the endohepatic artery approach, but uh, a normal liver can be preserved. So depending on what you do, uh, there are so many different approaches, and then uh, which uh, treatment should be given uh, is based on patient's uh, size of tumor, number of tumor, location of tumor. So we need an uh, interventional radiology group to come, uh, work with together. So now we develop the uh, immunoembolization using uh, GMGSF, uh, and then followed by the uh, embolization of the artery. If you use uh, ethyl 90 uh, radio microsphere bees, uh, we call it the radio embolization. Uh, chemoembolization with BCNU has been done for the relatively large tumor. And then also we can use uh, DevDox, drug editing bees uh, with doxorubicin or even you know, taken uh, if page tumor has a large network to market. So in Europe, uh, for the mustin has been given through the hepatic artery as an infusion. That there's a new technology by using the device uh, for the filtration of melphalan uh, based on the subcutaneous approach. That's the PHP uh, surgical approach is IHP. Uh, these are very aggressive approach with a higher response rate. Surgical resection is still uh, offered to the small number of patients who has one or two liver tumor. However, due to the invasiveness or comorbidity uh, in the United States, especially uh, this approach has been rep almost replaced by the focused radiation, such as stereotactic radio surgery or fractionally designed uh, radiation. And microwave ablation has been done uh, to kill the one uh, oligometastasis. 
So uh, obviously, uh, liver uh, uh, treat target treatment has a little bit better uh, our survival compared to the uh, approach uh, based on meta analysis. Uh, Lantara, uh, you know, uh, uh, report uh, 2,494 cases. Uh, median survival is uh, one, uh, one, I just yeah, 1.7 uh, years. And the isolated hepatic perfusion is 1.34 years, immunoembolization 1.63 years, the surgery is 1.43 years, and then uh, longer than uh, other approach such as chemotherapy. So, uh, International Bear uh, Cancer in uh, Initiative uh, also reported 907 cases uh, through participating clinical trial. Uh, as you see, uh, liver directed treatment is 14.6 months and then uh, much longer than uh, approach. Our institution showed a similar tendency. We have 730 patients. We divide it into three uh, cohorts uh, based on the uh, years that they treat. And cohort one, 70% uh, of patients receive system therapy, mainly DTS based chemotherapy. Cohort two and three has 98% of patients receive uh, some type of liver treatment, either alone or with system therapy. Compared to cohort one, a cohort two, or cohort three, it showed the obvious prolongation of survival. And then uh, somebody may say this is a little time bias, but uh, the same tendency is obtained uh, for the uh, time from the initial liver treatment, I'm sorry, initial eye treatment to hepatic metastasis, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, die. So therefore, a little time bias is not only factor. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. So this is a slide I borrowed from Dr. Ziga, uh, who pre uh, presented the result of the PHP at uh, ASCO last year. So basically, this is a PHP procedure inserted, uh, you know, double valve catheter into the IVC uh, to separate liver circulation from cystic circulation, and then uh, high dose melphalan was given to the hepatic uh, artery. And then uh, these uh, circuit uh, you know, removed uh, blood uh, go to the uh, device to remove the menfalan. And then after that, blood was returned to the uh, system circulation. So he reported that uh, compared to best alternative care, uh, this uh, PHP uh, approach improved the overall response rate, 32.9% compared to 30.8%. Uh, Progression free survival uh, was nearly tripled. Uh, uh, for the 9.03 months compared to 3.06 months. Uh, they didn't show the overall survival data that we need to wait. So this is well tolerable according to them, but still patients uh, have to go to ICU. So therefore this has to be done in a very experienced center. So in terms of target therapy, uh, there's many targets. So this is a G protein mutation, G alpha subunit mutation uh, submits the uh, stimulation signal to the downstream. Uh, this is the MAP kinase pathway. This is the YAP pathway. Uh, this is the PS3 kinase pathway. Uh, each uh, portion uh, that some medication is uh, de developed and then tried to use. So uh, most in interesting approach is like a PKC uh, inhibitor here and then uh, combining with MEK inhibitor. Uh, but also FAC inhibitor has been tried combined with MEK so this is a clinical trial doctor information uh, for each target uh, mutation has been uh, you know, or attacked by a combination of the multiple different medication, about one of this year, SSD one here. But I wanna just focus on this PKC inhibitor approach. So this has shown uh, some interesting uh, uh, regulation of the tumor. So this is data from the uh, IDEA uh, using uh, their compound IDE196. Uh, this is a PKC inhibitor uh, combining uh, data uh, with uh, Novartis clinical data. Uh, they show the a very good uh, shrinkage of tumor. Uh, roughly 61% of the patient show some type of regression. And then uh, in 20% patient has a uh, very a good response, like so-called partial response. So they try to improve this by combining other medicine. In this case, uh, IDE 196 is combined with imetinib. Uh, this is a MEK inhibitor. As you see, uh, this is very preliminary data, but uh, still a little bit higher uh, this, uh, regression rate. And of course, combination is usually increased toxicity, like uh, diarrhea, no vomiting. And then, so therefore, they are also exploring a different type of approach. So this is an approach, uh, another approach, combining ID196 plus uh, CMET inhibitor glizotinib. Uh, they've discovered that uh, CMET signaling from HGF uh, may uh, 
cause the resistance to ID196 protein uh, inhibitor. So therefore, by combining chrysotinib uh, cement inhibitor with uh, ID196, uh, just reverse the resistance mechanism, also suppress the signaling from PIC kinase pathway. Uh, this is also ongoing treatment. Uh, uh, it is a little bit better tolerable, uh, tolerated. Uh, so therefore, this might be an interesting combination for the increase of the efficacy. So uh, I will just briefly cover immunotherapy. So generally speaking, uh, as of today, immunotherapy it doesn't work well, uh, especially for traditional immunotherapy. There are many reasons. Uh, EVA melanoma is one of the least uh, uh, mutation, uh, tumor mutation burden. So therefore, anti-PD-1 therapy response is a single digit compared to the skin melanoma here. So this uh, liver metastasis, uh, liver melanoma does not express a PDL1, uh, so and the liver is also immunosuppressive microenvironment. So therefore, this is a very uh, difficult target to attack. So as a result, uh, immune checkpoint procure that is uh, successful for the skin melanoma uh, is not working well for the eye melanoma. If in evil combination treatment, usually 40 to 50% response rate in skin melanoma, now 10 to 18% response rate is uh, in toxicity, it's safe. So therefore, the current approach is bringing some uh, immune cell to the tumor site and either adaptive T cell therapy, TIL therapy, uh, or this is very important interesting molecule, so I'm just going to focus on this immunocompensin IMCTB100 to bring a new cell to the tumor site to increase uh, the information. So the other approach is the combining the anti pd antibody with another I mean, checkpoint rocket, like a lag string. So this is ongoing and then interesting approach. So this is a clinical trial approach uh, I obtained from the clinical trial uh, I will just focus on this uh, phase three trial of the IMCCP100 because this means may be approved. So this compound is very interesting. Uh, one end of the uh, compound is T cell receptor recognizing a GP100 peptide molecule on the surface of MSC class one, HLA2. The other end is a uh, uh, anti CD3 uh, antibody, which attach, uh, attack, uh, you know, bring a T cell into the tumor site. So, by combining this, we call this uh, an immune magnet. Uh, T cell go to the tumor cell to kill it. So, interestingly, expression of the uh, GP100 is more uh, clear uh, or more strong in the EVA melanoma compared to skin melanoma. So as a result, after infusion of this uh, uh, IMCGP100, now named is Tabentophus, uh, we see a strong, uh, significant drop in lymphocyte in the saturation. And then uh, this is a biopsy specimen before the treatment is a new cold tumor, it's become immune a hot tumor. This PD-1 expression, pd one expression, and CD8 uh, infiltration is same. So one of the major toxicity is skin rash. Uh, since GP100 molecule is also expressed in skin melanocyte, patient develops significant edema, a swelling of the uh, face or skin, and that is usually short lived. Uh, after one week, uh, most patients recover. And if you give a multiple tre weekly treatments, uh, patient develops the loss of pigment in the uh, you know, hair. So uh, there is some data that this degree of the skin reaction correlated to the clinical response. So uh, this is a, a phase three study, a so-called the IMCGP100-202 study. Patient is randomized into a two to one day shot, either a tabentophus uh, IMCGP100 or an uh, investigator choice. And patients should have a 201 and then no prior systemic therapy or liver directed treatment. So primary endpoint is overall survival. Secondary endpoint is response rate in progression with survival. <laughs> so this is kind of very clear data. Uh, Tabentophus uh, has better overall survival compared to investigator choice. Uh, median survival of Tabentophus is 21.7 months compared to investigator choice of 16 months. So based on the primary endpoint uh, achievement, uh, we expect that the uh, United States government uh, would approve this medicine sometimes in the future. So this is a summary of uh, my uh, discussion. Uh, the majority of uh, dust liver melanoma patients died of progression disease from metastasis, liver, liver metastasis. Therefore, liver directed treatment should be considered as frontline treatment to possibly prolong their survival. 
So there are many, multiple new medication in clinical trial uh, targeting GRABA mutation of EBF melanoma, especially GRQ single in pathway blockade is interesting. Uh, PKC inhibitor has shown some clinical response, so therefore expansion of this clinical trial is expected. So in terms of immunotherapy, uh, bringing T cell to the immune code metastasis EBF melanoma is critically important. In this regard, uh, melanoma is targeting T cell receptor uh, uh, anti CDC fusion protein, uh, IMCG200, showed a very promising survival benefit over investigator selective standard care, and then uh, will become the key treatment for metastatic melanoma with HLA 20201. So, more importantly, uh, development of the multidisciplinary treatment team is essential because uh, medical oncology alone cannot treat the liver metastasis. We need a collaboration with the information technology. So therefore, uh, develop the personalized approach. We need a team approach. Uh, hopefully, uh, we can develop such a team in many places in the, in the, in the world. So thank you for the invitation. I want to just show one more slide. Uh, this is a new approach, international collaboration of the UBM melanoma patient history. This is started from the uh, academic center uh, under the, uh, you know, our collaboration in the International Rare Cancer Initiative. And then a uh, UK uh, group is involved, and also United States, uh, Richard Carvajo, and then Mara Olof is a key member of this kind of approach to increase the registration of the database of the EBM plantation. So in collaboration with that patient uh, center, the group like Medical Research Foundation, Salah Slake, uh, developed the patient reported uh, you know, a registry system. So they are working together to increase the number of patient or accuracy data for the international collaboration. So I hope that the group from my colleague from the uh, uh, league uh, is joining us. Thank you very much. I for hope this. So, Max. Yeah.